We're getting ready to do uh, one more difficult repairs, in my opinion, on one of the GSX pin setters. I have a, uh, a green round belt that's broken down here. We have to weld it back together. Uh, I've got a couple sets of vice grips we're going to clamp it down with. Uh, please don't comment about getting the belt stretching uh, clamp device because, as you can see, I've got one, but it usually works best whenever you're doing two belts. If you're just doing one belt, and you're pulling on one side, it's not really centered up for it, so it kind of twists to one side as you're trying to pull, and it doesn't help them line up as, as well. So uh, I'm not going to use that in this instance, unless I wanted to cut the other belt and re-weld both of them at the same time. But then it's hard enough just to get the belt back on the wheel without me making my problem larger and having to do two belts. So we're going to try and just clamp this up with some vice grips. You can see i got one in the top here. It's just clamping the belt down. Uh, I have got it off both pulleys, so um, in the back, it's not on the pulley, it's actually in this trough in between, in the valley, and it gives me a lot more, a lot of extra slack where I can get all the, the extra play I need to weld the belts without any tension on it, and uh, I'm, I've made sure through the bottom that my belt is routed properly, it's not snagged on anything or caught in between anything. And then you got to pay attention to the way that the belt naturally curls. So uh, you don't want to put it together all twisted around. you got to follow the natural flow of the, of the belt and bring it back around to itself. So now we're going to try and pull tension out of the bottom. And we're clamping it. We're going to clamp it down and hopefully get in a position where we can hold it just enough to do the solder. Or the uh, belt welding, basically. I've done some other preparations uh, beforehand for doing this, and as I said, this this is just a way to do it. This is not the way to do it. It's a way to do it. Uh, you can choose it every way you want to do it as well. Um, I did some uh, pre-preparations. I've got some just some low voltage wire. You can probably find rope or anything else you can use to do this. I just strapped it to the machine on the frame here, and uh, I I'm estimated where my pair of channel locks. Once I am secured, I would like my channel locks to set rest flat up against this bottom wheel here, right here on the back pulley, so you can see where we're at at the back of the machine. So basically, it's going to rest here, and I've got a that that wire, the low voltage or the just whatever I've got. I got the wire, and it's going to go around the bottom of this set of vice grips, doing all this one-handed. And that's just it. once I lock it. That's just to keep the belt from pulling the vice grips back the other way while it's got it locked in. So it's going to it's going to actually use the edge here as a fulcrum as a pivot point and then you're going to have your this uh, low voltage wire as a uh, I guess a, a counter a counter resistance against the way it's pulling back. So now we're going to go ahead and set it up and clamp it up and that should give us the slack that we need. All right, so as I showed earlier the 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 top belt is already clamped down against the track using a pair of vice grips and uh, I've got the right flow on this belt so it's uh, it's going to be smooth, it's not twisted. I'm going to pull it to myself and I'm going to go ahead and clamp it with these vice grips. I'm going to go ahead and pull this that cable that I showed you. I'm going to just set it to the side for right now. And I've already got these adjusted, these, uh, these jaws, to where they're going to cramp right tightly with enough tension on this belt. I am bringing it up in between both of the rollers, both of the pulley wheels, and I'm going to pull it as much tension as I can to give me all the slack I need to do this weld. And now I'm going to go ahead and clamp it with the vice grips. Tighten it up a little bit more. There we go. And now I'm going to put this loop right on this set of vice grips. Alright. So as you can see, the uh, the belt is pulling against my vice grips, but the wire that I put on here is holding them back. And it comes back across here and it just ties up to this part. It's just finding points on the machine you can use for, I guess, uh, retention and as I bring you up top here you can see I got plenty of slack on this belt coming clear back to here I can bring them both together I can at least do my weld up here sorry 
I can do my weld up here with plenty of slack, nothing pulling back against me until it cools and everything. And then I got the big fight of putting the whole thing together on both of the pulleys. But I'm sure as you can see uh, from the numbers in the book, man, these are some tight belts to get on, especially if you go by the book. And uh, to let you know, the, the ones over here on the machine, I don't know if I've shown this in past videos, these belts right here, the big ones that run the transport band and the main system, in the book it says they're supposed to be 63. If you put them at 63, it's too much tension and ends up destroying your uh, pulleys up underneath here, under the bottom. So I talked to Brunswick, uh, uh, submitted a, a test that they need to test the length of these, and yes, they came to a conclusion that these do not need to be 63 inches in the book. Uh, 64 inches is a better number to use, so try using 64 on those for your prepared belts because we have spare ones in the back. When they break, we can just run and grab them. But back to where we were on these belts, let's go ahead and uh, get set up to weld this in the past again. before you do the belt welding and you get totally set up make sure your iron is plugged in i've got mine pl i just plugged it in now i didn't want to plug it in the whole time i was setting up because you don't want it to overheat uh these are 500 hundred dollar belt welding tools so take care of them but heat them up in enough time where they can do the work for you but don't just let them sit there and stay hot all the time so now we're getting ready to get set up and we're going to put these clamps on our actual all right, this is all basically done over top so you know, um, I've loosened the, the side nut on this clamp as much as I can without it coming off and spread these to their full distance. And we're going to go ahead and get these, get these green round belts and slide you up. And get these green round belts in here and go ahead and clamp them down. And uh, I'm going to leave a small 16th inch gap in between these two belts because I, I want the blade, the iron to have a, a direct route to go through. Uh, in the school, they instruct you to put them tight together. Uh, I find issues when I put them, button them tight together that the belt, the welding tool uh, likes to sidetrack and can't really find a direct path. So even just a small gap between there helps give it a guideline. And just in case you haven't seen some of my other videos in the past, just to show you, I've got some fender washers on the top of this clamp setup. Because if you don't have the fender washers there, they end up, uh, it's too much pressure sometimes on this little plastic clamp system that you end up breaking your, uh, the actual, the part of the device that holds down on these belts. Should be fair enough. Maybe the iron's hot enough. I can feel heat coming off of it. We're going to try and see if we can start working it through. When I use the iron, uh, I work back closer to the point here or to the back edge because that's where the most heat comes. If you work out here on the edge, the heat it, uh, dissipates by the time it gets out to here to the edge. So I keep up close on the point here. There's a lot more heat in this area. It's going to take some time, just uh, let the iron do the work. You're not trying to burn and force through it real quick. you got to heat that belt up and make it gummy to where it would adhere to itself. And I am I, I seesaw it back a little bit just so I can keep nice hot edge. Maybe the part you're uh, touching against is cooling already. So if I go back and forth a little, at least it keeps it heat it up. At least I expect that. Alright, I don't want this to be the most boring video, so I'm going to go ahead and pause it while I'm still heating up, and I'll turn All right, it we're getting on. closer. I just want to do another reminder. Uh, make sure your your welding blade goes through square at a 90-degree angle, basically, to the belt. 
don't go it at an angle. You want a good flat weld. It'll uh, it should be more secure in doing this work rather than something that goes all cockeyed and at an angle. I'm about to pass through to the other side. Once I pass through, there I'm through. I'm still going to hold it there for a minute, right in the dead center, not really pushing left or right. I want to let that, uh, I want to let the belt heat up on both sides. So when I bring them together, all right, here comes the hard part, getting the iron out and cranking this up and not getting burnt by the iron. Here we go. Iron's hanging. I don't want to melt my. Hang on. I gotta go back. I wasn't really ready. Alright, we're gonna try this a different way. I'm gonna drop it down into the. There we go. Crank this up. Yeah, it's hot. I'm going to push some of this back into the middle because it's trying to push it out. Ah! And crank it tight a little. I've got other videos showing the belts uh, being welded. You may want to look at those. Um, it gives a little bit more description of what's going on here. But I don't want to crank it so tight that the cold cores of the belt meet in the center. I want the hot gummy outsides to mash and to, to actually merge and meet. So that should be tight enough right now. We're going to let it sit in the clamps for two minutes. And then after we remove the clamp, we're going to let it sit for ten more minutes. So let's go ahead and start a timer. And we'll be back. All right, so we're already uh, past our two-minute mark. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, loosen the, the clamps on the top. Don't do the side one yet, just because I don't want to do any kind of separating. I just want to release it from the device. Not that this would really separate, you know, but it is a small spring on there, nevertheless. So I can get my belt out of there. There are, uh, you can either trim it with a razor blade or a knife, or uh, you have a belt trimming tool. Uh, I do have one, but this one, since we seem to break our, our uh, what would be considered the transport band green belt, more uh it's it's 15 millimeter and i believe that these are 12 a little smaller i already have this set up to work on the 15 millimeter belts as a wider because you actually set the blade depth adjustment so sometimes i go ahead and just use a regular straight razor and shave along the side of the belt careful not to cut yourself we'll see if we did a good weld here towards myself, just asking for trouble. Man. It's not really easy to get to the underside because you're twisting against itself some resistance. Doing a lot of feeling, can't really see it from the bottom. Looks like a great weld. I'm not seeing any air pockets underneath. Nice. Got lucky. All right, so we still need to let it cool. So far, it's only been five minutes, 30 seconds. So uh, my wrist, my uh, stopwatch needs to say 12 minutes before I'm going to try stretching this. Since it's such an important belt and it's no league pressure or anything like that, I'm going to let it do the full cool. 
All right, so we're just going to leave the, uh, the upper one clamped in for now and how we are pulling the slack to give us room back here in the back before. We're going to leave that one clamped. Now we're going to pull slack the opposite way so I can get slack on the other end where the other pulley's at, get it onto there first, and then we'll come back here and work on this end where I have more room to stretch the belt and everything. All right, for what I'm getting ready to do here, I'm going to go ahead and release. The sweep is already lowered. I'm going to go ahead and take the belt off of it because I want the sweep to be all the way at the back of the machine out of my way while I'm doing all this work. It's already a, a pain in the neck enough just to have it in your way. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this belt off. Once it's back far enough where it's out of my way, I'm going to put the belt back on it. And as you can see, the sweep's way at the back of the machine, clearly out of my way, so I can do all this work without having to climb all over it. I said before, every situation is different. Just because the way this belt welds isn't going to be the same with every other one. This is just an, an exterior belt on the 10-pin side, the far exterior green belt. And I'm going to clamp it down. It may work in this situation for you, and it may not work in another, in another application. But now I'm going to stretch this belt and try and pull it to me as much as I can to get all the slack out of it and then try and clamp it to hold it. I got it set and I'm gonna put it right against this frame here. There we go, so you can see I've got some slack in the belt now. Yeah, you can see it. That loose slack is going to help me get it on the pulley on the right under the underside of this uh, catch pan here. All right, nobody. I know nobody likes any extra work, but uh, save yourself some hassle and go ahead and remove that uh, return bumper plate. Get it out of your way. Give you some more room to do all the work you got to do. Glad the catch pan's there. I had to switch sides because my ratchet will not fit against the frame in this tight corner at the bottom. Still more hard part left. All right, the uh, next thing you're going to need is going to be a garbage bag. Uh, I've tried pulling these with a rag, and the rag seems too slick to pull on these. So I get with the plastic of the bag against the, I guess, uh, petroleum product of this belt. It actually has a little bit of grip, and it helps me pull it and bring it up around. Now I'm going to I'm not going to come from this side. I'm going to have to come from the other side of the frame underneath here and try and loop it around that belt and bring it up around the bottom by just pulling up. It's not going to be easy, but uh, it's the way I can get it on there. My best bet to get this. I don't think I've done one on this side before, so... Ah, try coming from the bottom. Because I, I put it around the belt, and then I twist it to make some tension. So, I'm going to put it under it. I know this is a poor part of the video because you're not really seeing what's happening here. But I'm, I've wrapped around the belt, and now I'm twisting this garbage bag. I'm going to bring it up through this back side and try and put the belt directly under the pulley. Oh, 
there at the emergency cutoff. It's not going to be easy with one person trying to do this. So I went ahead and took the other side guard cover off at the front so I can work through this back side with my arms, hopefully. So I've kind of put the white plastic bag in the groove of the pulley, and I'm going to make that green belt follow the white plastic garbage bag. Back up and pump. See a good struggle. Mm. There we go. Let's do this. Yeah. Oh, man. Alright, so after a couple failed attempts, I uh, stopped and I left the bottom clamp on up underneath the machine and I released the top one near the back so I could bring it closer to me and pull some more slack into this green round belt. Hopefully help me get it over easier. Feels looser. Oops. Oops had it. There we go. Alright, so that's the back belt. That's half the battle. Now let's, uh, or actually that's the front belt, that's half the battle. Now let's go to the back and we'll install it. The next step, we need to go ahead and remove the uh, pin return sock, just the connection right here. over what we're trying to do here. Now with the boot removed, I got a, a bigger black bag because I'm going to use it to wrap the belt and bring tension hopefully back to here and be able to stand on it with pressure. I'll go ahead and wipe the, wrap the white one first because I'm going to use the white one to pull up as I come underneath the pulley. I'm going to try and feed it right into the pulley wheel belt location. I'll put this black one in behind. 
behind the white one. I try and do this and not be in your way when I do it, but I got a physical use force on this to hold it down. A lot of pressure. Sorry about my language. Whew! That is quite the uh, quite the task to pull that off. Now, if you uh, just pull back, get your belt, get your uh, plastic bag out. Black one, I'm gonna pull back the opposite way. Make sure not to make your belt jump the track. Okay, so uh, belt's on, belt's tight. Talk about a workout. Uh, I'm just going to put everything back together the way it should be. Uh, hopefully you know what to do, just do it in reverse. Everything else is just guards and uh, putting back all the other part pieces to the, uh, the puzzle. Thanks for watching this. I uh, hope you don't break your back trying to do it.